Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Nielsen, and I have the privilege of serving as the Creative Director for Permanent Data Solutions, PDS. Today, I'm excited to delve into a topic that holds immense significance in our digital age, censorship as it relates to banned books and how we can combat it with decentralized technology. Today, we're going to delve into a topic that has profound implications for the freedom of information and ideas, banned books. What the? Not books about bans. That's a good joke though, right? So why do people ban books? Over the years, various themes and subjects have led to books being censored or banned, especially when they challenge or unsettle the status quo. Whether it's political dissent, religious controversy, issues of sexuality, morality, social or racial issues, any work introducing new unconventional ideas, especially those that might be seen as a threat to traditional values, can be targeted. Throughout history, powerful authoritarian institutions and governments have sought to prevent the flow of information that contradicts their agenda. By controlling narratives and suppressing challenging content, they aim to maintain their power, control public perception, and prevent dissent. Let's look at some famous examples of banned books. The Catholic Church maintained the Index Librorum Prohibitorum, the Index of Forbidden Books, from the 16th century until the mid-20th century. This list aimed to protect the faithful from reading material deemed heretical or contrary to Catholic doctrine. Works by authors such as Galileo and Voltaire found themselves on this index. This was in part because of theological interpretation. During Galileo's time in the early 17th century, the Catholic Church held a geocentric view of the universe based on theological interpretations of certain biblical passages, meaning the earth was at the center of the universe. So when Galileo suggested that maybe the sun was at the center of the universe, so the Catholic Church locked Galileo up. Voltaire's satire similarly undermined the Church's infallibility. Candide is a coming-of-age story that satirizes political institutions and leaders, parroting the best of all possible worlds. It takes aim of the autocratic rule, corruption, and abuses of power that were prevalent in Europe during the 18th century. Voltaire's sharp critique of monarchies, the Church, and aristocracy challenged the political status quo. Needless to say, the Catholic Church was not feeling it. Voltaire was incarcerated and later exiled from Paris. What? The Nazis famously burned a bunch of books. During Hitler's regime, book burnings were carried out as part of a broader campaign of censorship and ideological control. The Nazi party targeted and burned books that were considered un-German, Jewish, or politically subversive. These book burnings symbolized the suppression of dissenting voices and the promotion of Nazi ideology. One example of this is All Quiet on the Western Front, which is a compelling anti-war novel published in 1928. It portrays the grim realities of World War I through the eyes of a young German soldier, emphasizing the war's devastation and its profound effects on those who fought. The Nazis banned and burned the book, opposing its anti-war message, which clashed with their militaristic stance. The Nazis also condemned the works of Jewish-Austrian neurologist Sigmund Freud, especially his writings on psychoanalysis and sexuality. They viewed Freud's explorations of human sexuality and the unconscious as threatening, leading to his books being burned. The general climate prompted Freud, along with many other Jewish intellectuals, to leave Germany and Austria. Freud fled to London in 1938. The Soviet Union's censorship of dissident literature is another example of books being banned. Authors who exposed the horrors of the Soviet labor camps faced persecution. These works were banned or circulated underground because the Soviet Union presented itself as a utopian socialist state that respected human rights and championed the cause of the working class. But the Gulag Archipelago shattered this image by revealing the vast scale of oppression, torture, and death within the Soviet labor camp system. This was in stark contradiction to the official state propaganda. And this book had an influence on the RWE protocol, which I will explain shortly. Book censorship today, as if this weren't depressing enough, we have seen many contemporary examples of books banned by institutions in Texas and Florida for the LBGTQIA plus themes, as well as books that explore racism and race or other political issues. So that brings us to this question. How can you ban a book that you can't burn, delete, or even modify? This is where Arweave comes in. Arweave and Ban Books Week unite under a single mission to ensure the free flow of information despite frequent censorship attempts. Founded by grad student Sam Williams, in 2017, Arweave stands as a beacon against digital literary censorship. So how does Arweave relate to the history of banned literature? At its core, Arweave seeks to avert a future resembling the oppressive world described in George Orwell's 1984. 
Sam Williams was influenced by the Gulag Archipelago and 1984 and inspired to create a lasting historical record. Here's a fun tidbit for the historians. Our Weave's protocol pays homage to 1984. Its default port is 1984. Its smallest unit is named the Winston after the novel's protagonist, and it even launched on the 69th anniversary of the book's publication. Dang. So before the rise of digital technology, an uncensorable medium was pretty impossible. Physical books could be confiscated or burned, but digital content entered the game to offer a new layer of protection. Early web technologies might have been vulnerable to centralized sites being down, but Arweave is often dubbed the permaweb. It's a decentralized storage platform that emphasizes information permanence and global accessibility. Its design ensures that original content is archived indefinitely. Users can trace when data is uploaded, making it evident if the content has been altered or re-uploaded. This transparency applies to different content types, from text documents to eBooks to multimedia-like videos distributed across many nodes. It's akin to the game Whack-A-Mole, where you can delete one copy, but the others keep popping up. So Sam Williams envisioned a future where centralized control over information was nearly impossible. And we were starting to see real-world applications of this. So are we fixes this? This is a term we use a lot in the community. In Hong Kong, the pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily encountered severe censorship challenges under the new national security law. To counter this, activists in 2021 archived the newspaper's content on Arweave. Even though Apple Daily was forced to shut down and its online presence was erased by the government, its legacy persists on Arweave. This stands as a testament to the importance of diverse historical narratives, not just those shaped by the powerful. Thanks to Arweave's design, the archive content remains untampered and true to its original form. The conflict between Ukraine and Russia provides a pertinent example as well. As tension escalated, Russian cyber attacks intensified, specifically targeting centralized data servers. Remarkably, Arweave has archived over 6.5 million records related to this conflict. It's a pioneering effort in a real-time war documentation, offering invaluable resources for future generations and historians. Much like the situation with Apple Daily, the focus is on capturing and preserving a truthful narrative. Arweave's platform ensures that these records remain pristine and untouched. The ultimate goal? Safeguarding authentic historical narratives from any manipulation. So Banned Books Week resonates with Arweave's aim to challenge censorship, on several occasions, Arweave has preserved an accurate historical record in the face of attempts by centralized entities to alter it. Arweave stands as a revolutionary technological advancement in data storage. While it promises groundbreaking features, its technical interface might not be for everyone. Recognizing this, our team introduced R Drive. Let's go. So what is R Drive? You can think of it as Dropbox for Arweave, but with profound advantages. Your data store permanently, the content remains unchangeable, and you pay only upon data upload without any recurring subscriptions. Our drive simplifies the experience of using Arweave, which is committed to permanent decentralized storage. Whether it's text, images, complex videos, or encrypted data, Arweave stores it all. Its permaweb even allows users to set up personal pages, apps, and more. Our vision is to democratize access to Arweave, making it user-friendly for everyone, irrespective of their technical proficiency. The world of blockchain and decentralized technology is often seen as intricate, which sometimes hampers its widespread adoption. These challenges bird discussions about the blockchain trilemma, decentralization, security, and scalability. Phil Materis, the founder of Permanent Data Solutions, envisioned our drive to address these concerns. Today, we're discussing a practical and genuinely useful application of blockchain. Unlike other blockchains, the work expended in our weave actually produces something useful, permanent data storage. We won't dive into the technical intricacies today, but for those of you curious about the nitty gritty details, there are a wealth of resources available. Feel free to reach out after the presentation. I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. So as mentioned earlier, Arweave allows you to store any type of file from digital books to videos and more. One prominent example of its utility is how it can preserve historical texts in the digital book format, AKA the ebook. To illustrate its capabilities, we've archived a selection of banned books in the public domain, which I'm excited to show you. The first thing I'll show you is the public folder we put together. And it's easy to create and share folders like this. The pinning feature allows you to link other content on the permaweb, much like a Mac alias, and keep it all in one place. The second thing I put together is a permanent page I made that organizes all the books, everything on these pages, from the web page design itself to the downloadable content is permanently stored on Arweave. This ensures that the content can never be deleted or altered. It remains forever unbanned. Its accessibility is permanent. No one can revoke or modify access rights and centralized entities cannot erase it. 
We invite you to try this out for yourself to upload public domain banned books or anything else. You can also encrypt and upload private files with a password. There's no subscription. You pay once and you store indefinitely. For those of you just starting, small files can be uploaded for free. And if you're looking to upload larger files, we have a promo code available. Please reach out to learn more. Thank you for listening.